Alrighty, so in the last video I kind of just showed you what I was doing here, what I've been up to with uh, just uh, just working on a data logger. I thought I'd go through right away. I had some requests on the last data logger video to go through the code. I'm going to go through some bits and chunks. I'm not going to go through the whole thing like getting these graphs. You're probably going to have to learn how to do that on your own. But uh, we'll keep that running for now. Um, I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. Anyways, um, so I'll go through some of the more interesting things. The first thing that I wanted to go through was threading. Threading in Qt is interesting. Um, this right here is where I make my thread. Um, so what you do is, is you create a thread object. I believe it's a thread object. Again, I'm not, uh, I'm not an expert by any means, so if I'm using the wrong words, the comments below, please let me know. Um, I'm willing to learn and kind of that's kind of the whole point of it but anyways and then we make our we so we, we build a thread in in Windows or whatever operating system I think this will work with Linux too but we make a thread and then we make an object of our serial thread um, class so I have this class right here this is all of my serial stuff right here um, and in you know so we make an object of that in our main window and then we move that object using the move to thread to the thread that we made right here and then you go thread dot thread dot start so that's kind of the way that I am doing it and it's been the most reliable the QT documentation goes through a much different way and uh, this is just the best way that I've found to do it um, and then I have all my well, I have a couple of connects. So that's my start and my stop button. They connect through uh, signals and slots to my serial thread. And that's kind of the main way that I have communicated between the two threads. So like you can send data through a signal. So like you can get, you can include signal or like data in the signal. We'll go through that in a little bit here. But um, and then I just have all my buttons and stuff here and whatnot. So. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to put this up on GitHub if you want to take a peek, but anyways, that's kind of the first interesting thing is threading here. Um, let's go over to some serial stuff. This was by far the hardest part of this whole thing, and uh, yeah, I had to start a thread on the QT forum, and finally I figured it out, but we'll just go through this whole thing, not necessarily line by line, but you know, anyway, so I have this Boolean value here which I declare in my serial thread.h so that's down where is that okay boolean nope right here Arduino is available and we don't need to go through all this that that deep but basically I have this Arduino is available that means that it found an Arduino right now we're at false so I set that to false right off the get-go um, my port name, just set that as nothing. Um, and then with this guy here, so what we're doing here is we're making a new object of the Q serial port class. Um, we're putting it into this object or this main, yeah, this part here. So we're making a new Q serial port class inside of the serial thread class or object. Um, so then we make a serial buffer status false. I'll show you that stuff here in a little bit. I got date time and I got a file name that'll come in handy later. This here, so sticking to the serial stuff, this little piece of code that I have commented out, this is how we find the vendor identifier and the product ID. So I don't have in my, in my project here, nowhere do I have set up like a baud rate or anything like that. I'd like to get there one day. That's what this is for. This is just my second revision of the first version. 1.3 will probably have that, but that'll be a while because this works perfectly for what I'm doing with it. Um, anyways, so this is where I found my product ID and my identifier. And then if I go into here, these are those. So I have Arduino Uno vendor identifier and product ID. I think all Arduinos have these. So from that, 
we go through this for each loop and it, uh, it basically finds which which port the Arduino is on. So Arduino port name, it'll just give you their port right here. And then we make our Arduino is available, basically it's connected to equal true. Um, and then we have this if loop that runs if it's available, which if it passes through this, it'll go true. So it'll run through this, and then we give this Arduino object all of its, basically all of its, uh, yeah, all of its attributes. Um, so we set the port name to be the port name that we found up here. Um, and again, this is just going through all of the serial ports looking for these unique identifiers and, um, yeah, basically the product identifiers and um, that kind of stuff. So uh, let's see here. Yeah, vendor and product identifiers. Um, so it's just going through getting the vendor and the product IDs. Found it, so we set it, set our Arduino port name to that port. And then uh, then we go open Q serial port. I'm only reading from it, I'm not writing. So I just have read only. I set my bot a little bit higher at 19200. You can set it whatever you want to, just make sure that the Arduino matches. Um, Arduino set data bits. I don't know why that's data eight, but look at the documentation. Most are eight. Um, set parity, no parity. Uh, stop bits, one stop. 1 1.5 is for Windows. I'm not really sure what that means. This is working just fine on Windows. Um, set read buffer size, and then I just set it to the size of a float. Um, set flow control, yeah, no flow control object connect so this guy here is important uh, this is where we connect the alrighty so I took a look at this I can't figure out how I remember why I did it like this I kept it like this because I remember seeing this we're going we're taking our serial data and we are converting it to a standard string and then we are converting that into a Q string which is what our serial buffer is the problem is that I can't make serial buffer into a standard string and I can't make, I can't just convert straight away from, um, just like from a stand to a standard or to a Q string. Again, if you know what this line of code should look like, the comments are below. Um, so yeah, basically we're taking while this while loop takes it until this is found, and then we go to this guy. We convert it into a string a Q string, which is a huge roundabout way. I get that, but it's working for me right now. I'm a noob. It's fine. Well, no, it's not fine. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to redo this. So uh, we're taking this while loop and it is finding the, it's just reading the data, putting it into a Q byte array. And then we get to the end of the input, which is this new line. And then we put it into a string, which I know this is messed up, but um, it's working right now. We'll we'll change that in number three. Um, then we take full data, which is our full data. We split it at the commas so that every variable is split apart. Um, and then we send the size of that full data. This is to get the, uh, remember those drop downs right here? I'll make a new one here. This is basically to get these numbers right here. So it'll output nine because the new line is another one. Um, so I just make it into minus one. So that full data, that's then sent out right here to in, in its own uh, signal. So data size is a signal. And then we send in the signal uh, data size int, which is that, and then that goes off to my data widget here. Oh, it goes to this, which it goes to right here, total. So this sig this slot is connected to this signal here, and that's how we get that. So um, anyways, back to the serial. So we have, we all put our, the size of our data, how many data points are we trying to push is basically what I'm trying to find. And that's infinitely customizable. I could push 100 data points off that Arduino, it's gonna chug, but 
I could push it. And this thing would come up with a hundred different numbers there, one through one hundred, which I think is pretty sweet. Um, and then we have this status. This is what I just did here. Um, this status is basically that start stop button. When I push start, it makes the status to be true. And when I push stop, it makes it false. Um, we can delete those. What I need to do here, I need to do this with this other one here, if Arduino is available. Anyways, if the Arduino is available, status equals true. And then uh, if it doesn't, then we debug. I couldn't get Q message box to work right now, but again, that's another version. Nothing's perfect here. Um, so that, that's what this is doing. If the status is true, then we're gonna record the data, which is recording it to a CSV file. And we're gonna emit the read signal, which then sends over this signal, the full data. And then that full data is taken to our, our uh, data widget, which is right here. Update data, UI display. And then we take the full data, but then we just take the element that is one, two, three, four. So it's current text dot two int. I could do that differently, but it's working for me. Um, yeah, and we do the same thing for the, um, well, this is update combo box, but we do the same thing for our graph widget. A UI combo box, or let's see here, that's the plot. We take full data right here, and this is where we get our full data. I put it into a buffer first, and then I, and then I, uh, I just take first on that. That's this is basically how I make it so that you can have you know twenty five points, seventy five points, thousand points. I save all of the points into one variable or one uh, what are these um, arrays? I think. Yeah, they're vectors. Vectors or lists, yeah. Yeah, they're lists. So I save them all into a list, and then I take that list based off of what I wanna see, and I put it into final graph data. Uh, back to serial thread. So we emit that, it goes off, it displays, um, and we have a record, it does whatever it needs to do, and then at the end, of all of that we have we clear our buffers basically so and I learned you do not want to go and just um, you want to use clear you don't want to go something like this equals like that because that's kind of sloppy so use clear um, and then we break this while loop so yeah that's basically how I'm doing the serial reading of this whole thing um, which I kind of thought this was this was the only way that I got it to work. I fought with this for so long because when you first when you first read this, you think, well, this ready read means that um, stuff is ready to be read. That means that that new line character should have already come in. And in like a Python, when you're reading with Python, it's super easy. It's just one line to read the code or to read the serial. It spits it out real nice for you, but here in QT, it doesn't. It, it, it'll read like the first two characters, spit out the first two characters, and so that's why I have this while loop, while Arduino bytes available. And then I put it into a buffer here, and then I make sure that that buffer is complete. And once it is complete, then we go off to doing other things now. I'm not sure if this is the best way. What I've heard with C++ is that if statements are kind of time and resource heavy, this isn't super time dependent. So I use two if statements. Maybe I'm not supposed to use an if statement inside of an if statement, I don't know. If you're a pro, comment below. Um, so yeah, that's basically kind of the things that I really wanted to show you. Um, so we've kind of gone through just my serial stuff. Um, oh, this is the data logging. So we open up the file name, which is specified elsewhere. And um, this is specified through the front end. Uh, this is something I wanted to ask, actually, because what I have this, this is one of the few places where I didn't use a signal in a slot. I just use this. 
I went into my serial thread. This is where I made an object up here, serial thread, remember? Um, that's my object of the serial thread class. Of the serial thread class. 